Last summer, during a vacation, I found myself on a spontaneous hike. One of my original plans had been canceled for the day, so I decided to hit the trail. The area I chose wasn't renowned for its scenic beauty. It was mostly flat, covered in dense woods. Still, I embarked on the hike to kill some time. What struck me as peculiar was that along the trail, I kept coming across smaller paths branching off from the main one. They seemed freshly carved out, as if a few people had attempted shortcuts. However, one of these side paths caught my attention because it veered off in an entirely different direction from the main trail, with no obvious reason to do so. I gazed as far as I could through the thick woods, but my vision was obstructed by trees. My curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to explore this new path to see where it led. I assumed it might take me to a pond or some mildly interesting spot, anything to break the monotony of the main trail. I continued walking for about 15 minutes much further than expected, until I reached the end of the path. It abruptly gave way to an open area with nothing but grass and trees. I proceeded a few steps beyond the path's end and was astounded to discover a cabin, nestled in the heart of the woods. The cabin's wooden exterior was draped in moss, and its roof seemed on the verge of collapsing. I approached the cabin's front, only to find that the door was missing. The surrounding trees cast deep shadows inside, making it hard to discern the interior. Arming myself with my phone's light, I ventured further inside. The cabin comprised two mostly empty rooms littered with debris, including shattered tables and broken wood. In the hallway, I noticed a partially open door, leading to a dimly lit basement. Despite my growing unease, I descended the 10 or 15 wooden steps into the basement where a pungent odor engulfed me. The room was cramped, akin to a decaying walk-in closet. On one of its walls lay another, partially open door. My phone's meager light failed to penetrate the long tunnel beyond it, which appeared to crumble in places. Fear welled within me, and I decided that it was time to leave. I turned to ascend the steps, and as my phone's light passed over a shadowy room, a figure's eyes ignited in the darkness. It stood in the corner of the room beneath the stairs, and fear overcame me. I raced up the steps, stumbling in my haste, and didn't stop running until I reached the main trail, my car, and the safety of distance. To this day, the image of those eyes in that dim basement haunts my nightmares. Last year I stayed at a cabin that had been in my family for generations. It's a small two-bedroom cabin, isolated in the middle of nowhere. Our family used it as a vacation home or for weekend getaways. I hadn't been particularly interested in staying there because it lacked modern amenities, with well water accessed by a manual pump and only an outhouse for a bathroom. However, due to budget constraints, I decided to give it a shot. Upon my arrival, I was surprised at just how remote it was. I knew it was in a secluded area, but this cabin felt entirely off the grid. After parking and starting the generator for electricity, I entered the cabin using the family key. Despite its limitations, it was quite cozy once I arranged my things. However, I couldn't help but notice the utter absence of any nearby vehicles or signs of life. Nevertheless, since I was only staying for one night, I didn't dwell on it too much. As the sun began to set, I turned off my devices eager to rest for the long drive ahead. Just before nightfall, I went outside to switch off the generator to conserve fuel. It was then that I saw a light deep in the woods. It was the only visible light for miles around. I watched the light and it appeared to move until it vanished far off. I lingered outside, waiting to ensure it was gone. Satisfied, I returned it indoors used the lamp to make my way to the bedroom, and eventually fell asleep. In the morning I rose at dawn, made coffee and stayed indoors until midday. Then I decided to investigate the source of the mysterious light. It took me about 20 minutes to reach the area where I had seen it. There was no visible path or any indication of human presence. Perplexed, I returned to the cabin and resumed my day. Night fell, and I decided to turn off the generator once again. To my surprise, the same light I had seen the previous night was back. This time, it remained stationary in the woods. I observed it for a while but eventually went inside feeling uneasy. Sometime during the night I woke up, groggy and needing to use the outhouse. Reluctantly, I put on some clothes and went outside with a handheld lamp. 
As I walked back to the cabin, I saw footprints near one of the windows. They weren't mine. The footprints encircled the cabin before veering off. I couldn't bring myself to follow them, but their direction led straight to where I had spotted the light in the woods. However, the light had disappeared. My gut clenched with dread, and I sprinted back to the cabin. Quickly gathering my things, I drove away in the dark, not looking back. To this day, I'm unsure of what transpired that night at the cabin, but I doubt I would be around to tell the tale if I had stayed. Last year, I stayed at an Airbnb for a single night during a road trip. The cabin-style home was located in a forest, serving as a midway point on my journey. The plan was to stay for just one night before resuming my drive. The cabin was rather remote, far from any signs of civilization. Arriving just before sunset, I navigated down a long gravel road that led to the cabin. It looked older than I had expected, and the path from the driveway to the front door had turned to mud due to recent rainfall. Once I managed to get my bags inside, I took a look around. The cabin's interior was dimly lit, with only a few windows. I turned on a single lamp in the corner, the only one that seemed functional. I messaged the host inquiring about the lack of lighting, but my concerns went unanswered. Despite the underwhelming start, I figured I was only staying for one night, so I decided not to dwell on it. After arranging my belongings and planning my route for the next day, I put my phone away. A loud, unexpected knock echoed from the front door. It was forceful enough to evoke frustration more than confusion. Since there was no peephole or window to check, I cautiously opened the door. To my surprise, a man in heavy winter clothing stood on the porch, sporting a wide grin. The clothing seemed excessive given the mild breeze outside. He introduced himself as the host and said he was there to assist with the lights. I wasn't thrilled about his unscheduled visit or the lights, but since he was already inside, I accepted his help. He entered the living space and started working on one of the lamps. Curiously, I observed that there were no other vehicles in sight which struck me as odd for such a remote location. I was about to ask him about it when he suddenly turned, making eye contact with me. Last year, I stayed at an Airbnb for a single night during a road trip. The cabin-style home was located in a forest, serving as a midway point on my journey. The plan was to stay for just one night before resuming my drive. The cabin was rather remote, far from any signs of civilization. Arriving just before sunset, I navigated down a long gravel road that led to the cabin. It looked older than I had expected, and the path from the driveway to the front door had turned to mud due to recent rainfall. Once I managed to get my bags inside, I took a look around. The cabin's interior was dimly lit, with only a few windows. I turned on a single lamp in the corner, the only one that seemed functional. I messaged the host inquiring about the lack of lighting, but my concerns went unanswered. Despite the underwhelming start, I figured I was only staying for one night, so I decided not to dwell on it. After arranging my belongings and planning my route for the next day, I put my phone away. A loud, unexpected knock echoed from the front door. It was forceful enough to evoke frustration more than confusion. Since there was no peephole or window to check, I cautiously opened the door. To my surprise, a man in heavy winter clothing stood on the porch, sporting a wide grin. The clothing seemed excessive given the mild breeze outside. He introduced himself as the host and said he was there to assist with the lights. I wasn't thrilled about his unscheduled visit or the lights, but since he was already inside, I accepted his help. He entered the living space and started working on one of the lamps. Curiously, I observed that there were no other vehicles in sight which struck me as odd for such a remote location. I was about to ask him about it when he suddenly turned, making eye contact with me.